الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله uh, The next hadith in chapter of Salah عن أبي بكرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان إذا جاءه أمر يسره خبر ساجلا لله رواه الخمسة إلا النسائي Two more hadith left in this chapter will read them. And then we'll translate on Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Qala sajida nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa'athara al-sajood. Thumma rafa rasahu wa qala inna jibreela atani fabasharani. Fasajadtu lillahi shukra. Rawahu Ahmad. Sahahahu al-hakim. Qala nabara ibn Azim radiallahu ta'ala anhu. أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بعث عليا إلى اليمن فذكر الحديث قال فكتب عليا بإسلامه فلما قرأ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الكتاب خر سائلا شكرا لله على ذلك رواه البيهقي وأصله في البخاري في أحاديث يتعلق بعض سجود الشكر This is a different kind of sujood So we talked about سجود السهو والسجود you make when you forget something in the salah and that is two sujood not one just like the sujood of salah and then we talk about sujood at tilawa which is what you the sujood you make in certain parts when you're reciting the Quran whether you recite inside the salah or outside the salah the third kind of sujood is sujood as shukr shukr means to thank Allah and that is uh, a sujood that you make when something very uh, that makes you very happy happens to you if you have if you're in a big problem and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieves you of this problem suddenly or if you suddenly blessed with a big blessing uh, the, so to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is from the sunnah to make sujood to fall to the ground and bow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prostrate and to thank Him and this is uh, a very nice way to show gratitude and if you think about it a very nice way to put your head on the ground and thank this Lord who has given you what he has given you or taken away the evil that has fallen upon you um, <clears throat> and when you make sujood in general what do you say you can start by saying subhana rabbi al-ala just like you say in salah praise to Allah the, the most high or the highest uh, subhana rabbi al-ala it's just like you make in the salah then you can add other things you can then talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, thank him and just say whatever you Feel in your heart, oh Allah, this was a big problem, and you relieved me of it, you saved me from this trouble. So many things you can say. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the best way to thank Allah also, also is to say Alhamdulillah and to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, Abu Bakr says, the Prophet used to make this sujood when something uh, hap- that makes him happy occurs. إذا جاءه أمر يسره with something that brings happiness to his heart he would make sujood to Allah سبحانه وتعالى but it has to be something that is not a regular occurrence okay as I mentioned before uh, coming to the salah uh, you do this regularly and it's a big blessing from Allah سبحانه وتعالى huge blessing to come uh, from before the salah uh, Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says if people knew how much لو يعلمون ما في العتمة والفجر لا توما ولا حبوة. They they know how much reward they would get for coming for Salat al Isha and the morning prayer. People would come even if they had to crawl, even if they had to crawl. So this means no matter how sick you are, no matter how tired you are, if you knew how much reward, you would come even crawling. Subhanallah. This must be unimaginable reward. ولا يعلمون ما في التأذين لا اختفوا عليه بالسيوف. <laughs> if they know how much reward is in calling the adhan, they would fight with the swords for it. But we don't see these things, that's why we don't feel it. <laughs> if they know how much reward is in being in the first line, of course, in the bigger masajid, there are multiple lines, but the earlier comes and gets the first line. He says if people knew how much is in the first line, and they can only go by, you know, flipping the coin, they would flip the coin, who stands here, who stands here, who stands next. <laughs> so, uh, so, but this is a huge blessing, but it's a regular occurrence, because some people make sujood shukr for every salah, and that is not of the sunnah, but if something 
uh, big happens to you that is not a regular occurrence because every day we are in a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every breath that we take in every moment of our life we are yani, <coughs> encompassed by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala around us whether the blessings are general to humanity or to the creation in general or special for you because there are blessings for everyone that we share with other human beings whether Muslims or non-Muslims right? like the sun yani, how can we live without the sun how can we live without a stable earth how can we live without the air that we breathe and these are general blessings and there are special blessings to you for instance uh, or to your family and there is more special blessing in your, uh, the iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and you know, Abdurrahman now Abdurrahman now reports from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one time made a long sujood and then he raised his head and says that Jibreel the angel Jibreel came to me and gave me some good news so I made sujood for Allah I don't recall what, he made, what, what the news was I read it a couple of days ago but subhanAllah I've already forgot what, the, uh, what it was about anyone knows what he, what he told him that day inshallah I'll try to لا هي في حدث معين كده بشره بي بس أنا ما أذكره وعن البراء ابن عازب رضي الله تعالى عنه أن بعث عليه وصف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سنت علي بن أبي طالب في اليمن to call them to Islam and then علي بن أبي طالب so wrote him back a book that uh, uh, the people of Yemen or most of the people of Yemen have entered Islam and apparently يعني, the people of Yemen entered collectively into Islam uh, there's, not, there's no mentioning in history that it was conquered in any way they, were, they entered Islam very easily uh, and they all entered Islam uh, يعني, rarely do you find a non-Muslim in Yemen it's almost 99.9% Muslims uh, in Yemen uh, I know there are some Jewish families, uh, Jewish, some, still some Jewish tribes in Yemen. I've seen some pictures of them, but mostly, uh, mostly they are the Muslims. Um, <coughs> so he wrote him back that the people of Yemen entered Islam. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also mentioned the Hadith: "Al Iman wa Yaman, Al Hikmat wa Yamaniya, Wal Iman wa Yaman." He says that Iman. Hadith is Sahih. He says the the Iman belongs in Yemen. The Iman, the belief, belongs in Yemen. I don't know if you've met some people from Yemen, but يعني, they tend to have a يعني, good uh, fitrah, you know, instinct, natural instinct that leads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you see this a lot. Uh, يعني, uh, I lived in, 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 Bro- in Brooklyn, and there was a big Yemeni community. يعني, uh, some of them uh, يعني, are very uh, highly educated, and mostly يعني, not educated at all. But we go, come to the salah, almost everyone is in the masjid. Almost everyone. And the masajid in Yemen are very full, and, you, and yeah, a lot of people are very, they're very concerned about Islam in Yemen. There's a Muslim in Detroit, you know, it's called Mas Mechabal. And it's being surrounded by all the Yemenis, like 100%, yeah. almost like most of them. And there's only after Girbon Masjid who has, I mean, they are doing Azan five times a day. And loud, right? They, they, they allow them to make Azan in, in a speaker on the outside. Because the whole area. Uh, يعني, is populated by Muslims in that area uh, and he said that Hikmat Yemeni Yemeni and also the hadith uh, one time the people of Yemen came as, uh, to visit Medina and he says أتاكم أهل يمن هم أرقوا الناس قلوبا وأجنوا أفيدة he says the people of Yemen have come to visit you they have the softest hearts out of all people they have the softest hearts out of all people Abu Bakr Siddiq one time when he was passing by the people of Yemen when they visited Medina he found them reciting the Quran and crying they recite Quran and cry and Abu Bakr Siddiq was walking with some Sahaba <laughs> he said to the Sahaba he says هَكَذَا كُنَّا قَبْلَ أَنْ تَقْسُوَ قُلُوبُنَا SubhanAllah he says this is how we were before our hearts became hard <laughs> Abu Bakr Siddiq is saying that SubhanAllah um, so he, he, wrote, he told, wrote to him that they, they've entered Islam he says uh, when the Prophet Muhammad read the book immediately he, he fell down to the, gro- to the ground makes sujood and to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is mentioned that also Ka'b ibn Malik uh, he was one of the Sahaba uh, who did not go for the battle of Tabuk and he was boycotted by, uh, based on the commandment of the Prophet Muhammad and of course this was a, a wahi from Allah this was inspired by Allah to as a kind some kind of um, uh, يعني, almost like a, like a punishment for not doing that 
thing. Uh, so he, for 40 days, nobody was talking to him. But then it was mentioned in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that Allah has accepted them and accepted their, and has forgiven them and, and uh, accepted their repentance. So immediately Ka'b ibn Malik made, made sujood because there's something very big that his story was mentioned in the Quran and that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly states in the Quran that he's accepted them because nobody really knows if Allah has accepted, right? But this is a, this is a clear statement that he has accepted their repentance and has forgiven them. This is something very valuable. She made sujood. Uh, also, Abu Bakr Siddiq himself, he was the first ruler after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, a large portion of Arabia that had entered Islam recently, they left Islam. Uh, a large portion, not the people who were Muslims for the, uh, during the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but the people who entered Islam in the last one or two years. A lot of them entered Islam based on the power of the Muslims at that time, that they conquered Medina, they, that they have control of Medina, that they conquered Mecca. After that, uh, all of Arabia said, well, if Quraysh has given up and Quraysh has entered Islam, we better just come peacefully. So, once the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, exactly, they said, no, we don't, we, uh, some of them said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll remain Muslims, but we, don't, we won't pay zakah, we don't want to pay any money. <laughs> some of them left Islam altogether, and uh, so Abu Bakr Siddiq did not uh, accept that from them, and he actually fought the tribes. You, we, you're not forced to enter Islam, nobody's forced to enter Islam. But, uh, yani, if you enter Islam, you have to keep, uh, you have to, you have to stay, stay as a Muslim. Uh, you don't, don't enter Islam if you're not convinced. But, uh, but it's not uh, like a game that you enter and then you leave, you enter and then you leave. So uh, there was a big war between Abu Bakr Siddiq and whoever remained as a Muslim at the time, and uh, and the big tribes in all of Arabia to establish Islam because they said no we don't uh, this is something new we don't want it we will not rule by Islam uh, so they left everything so he had to get, regain control of all of Arabia again so he fought Harub al Ridda and once he uh, there was the biggest person who was leader for all this apostasy was Musaylim al Kaddab Musaylim his, his nickname now or the he's famous by Musaylim al Kaddab meaning Musaylim the liar because he was a big liar and he claimed to be a prophet after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, he was killed uh, in that battle of Yamama once Abu Bakr Siddiq heard that he was killed he made sujood to thank Allah thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala this is the end of the chapter of sujood al sahu next chapter we'll talk about Salat al tatawa which means the prayer that you make the optional prayers that you make before and after the, the different prayers you know. Yeah, no, they go to the, the of no. they, they were all of them were accepted their excuse? No, 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 no. There are two kinds. There's the munafiqin, the hypocrites who came and said, "Oh, we had, uh, we were sick," and they came with all different excuses. And those Prophet Muhammad SAW did not even blame. Uh, he would, he was commanded that whatever they say, he. He just lets them go and leaves them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But three people specifically came and they said, you know, we, we had no excuse. We just did not have the motivation to go out with you and we are wrong. Uh, from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Ka'b ibn Malik said to him that, he said, Amma hadha faqad sabak. So this one has said the truth, which means many other people were lying to me. They were giving excuses out of nothing. So he says, Amma hadha faqad sabak. Uh, he says, this, this man has said the truth. So, uh, no, not all, everyone was accepted, but these three, they were mentioned by number. It says, For these three, they were honest, and they were upfront, and just because they said the truth, you know, the, this is the thing, it tells us that, it is not, uh, the, the shame is not to commit what is wrong. The shame is to lie about it, and try to cover up, and try to pretend that it is something else, you know. Uh, uh, this is, uh, because then you enter, the, you enter into a different sector, which is the hypocrisy that you are showing something that, that is different from what is inside. This, this is a big problem. So whatever you do, whatever we do, um, we should try to be honest to ourselves and honest in front of the people and not to uh, yani show on the outside something that we, that we don't really have on the inside. المتشبع بما ليس فيه كلابسي ثوب يزور نعم The point you mentioned about being uh, in the first big world the world that could be in the first world no, no, no. so it uh, 
has to be like to come early, not to what's called in Arabic Khat al No, exactly. It is you have to come early to get to the first line. You're not allowed to come late and, and try to pass between the lines to get to the first line. Now, man sabaq ila shayin fa huwa haqqu bih. Now, when you and even if it's a small child, he still has the right as long as he's not is as long as he's not going to disturb the line. But if you come with your children and they are quiet and they stay and they play like adults. Uh, no one can come and say, no, this child has to go back, uh, they let the adults pray in the first line. No, if you're an adult, you come first, come early and take your place, don't kick the children back. Now. So, let's say you got a good news, hmm. but the place you are, let's say it's not uh, from somewhere you are at work or somewhere else, hmm. going to hospital. Yeah. There is no way to make a Can you delay? Well, 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 I mean, unless you're in the bathroom, yani. <laughs> but any place you can make sujood. What you are at the end of unless you are the places where you cannot make sujood is when you're in the graveyard, or you are in the uh, in the bathroom, or ma'atin al ibil, or in the barn where the camels are. Naam, where, where else? Uh, and of course, in the washroom, in the bathroom. Uh, these are the places. Uh, 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 so it Exactly. In this situation, we don't even pray in front of them. <laughs> no, serious. Now, when we want to pray at work, we don't pray in the middle of the people watching us. We don't do that. I personally close my, my room and I pray. Because people will not understand this. And I agree. I mean, yes, if people don't under, if you're in a place where, in the middle of the street, yes, if you're in a Muslim country and you can, you can make sujood, you can make sujood. But if you're in a place where, where people will not understand, will think that maybe you're g- giving your last wish before you do something, <laughs> then don't, don't do it. <laughs> you'll, you'll get up and you'll be taken to jail. <laughs> come, come with us. <laughs> so my, one time, I, a friend of mine, he's, yeah, and he's a lecturer at the university teaching engineering, and he's a very highly educated man, born and raised in Kentucky. You know, he has his, like his blonde and blue eyes, and, and even his beard is blonde. <laughs> and um, he doesn't have a place to pray, so he goes outside of his lab, and there's a small, like, Pepsi machine. So between the door and the Pepsi machine, he stands there and makes his salah. One time he was making his salah there, uh, and that was after 9-11. The janitor, the guy who cleans the place, was passing. Says, oh, you're probably, you're probably going to be a suicide bomb or something like this. <laughs> they don't understand that we pray all the time. They, for them, you pray because you're dying, maybe. <laughs> but you don't remember Allah unless you're in big trouble. <laughs> but for us, we have to pray at least five times a day. <laughs> exactly. I mean, whenever there's a, yeah, a situation where you can educate them, yani. you don't understand, they give a khutbah of course, because they won't understand if you start giving a lecture about Islam, but you try to, yani, in your normal speech, you, you can, if you find that there's a gap that where you can give them a piece of information here and there, that's the best way to do it in a natural way. Because also, if you start giving them a lecture like this, it will be the last lecture you give them, they will avoid you next time, <laughs> because they think you're weird, right? So, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if I how and Mutaban, Washuham, Shoham Mutan, Homuta, to Mutaban, while a Jebu Kuli Mar in Binefsihi, Falika the Hosti Nefsi. He says, when you find that everyone is following their desires, and everyone is just concerned about their, their, their own self, uh, and everyone is just proud of what he has, this is what we're living in right now, he says, then take care of yourself. Then you have to focus on yourself, and only when you think that you can give something that will benefit and it will be in the right place to the right people at the right time, that is when you give it. Join.